batteries have been the main production constraint on the Tesla semi-truck for at least the past three years. Elon Musk originally unveiled the Tesla Semi in 2017 with a planned release date of 2019. However, the vehicle got pushed back multiple times as it didn't make much sense to divert batteries towards the Semi and away from Tesla's other products such as Model 3 and Model Y. But now Tesla Semi is finally slated to be delivered to customers in just one month's time starting with PepsiCo on December 1st, 2022. The Semi may be using somewhere between 5 to 10 times the number of batteries that the Model S uses. Tesla claims an efficiency of less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile, and at 500 miles of range, this would give Semi a worst case scenario of 1 megawatt hour for its battery size. However, last year on the Joe Rogan podcast, Elon Musk said that probably something on the order of 500 kilowatt hours for the pack is what Tesla is shooting for, though this could have been for the alternate 300 mile range version of the semi. The 500 mile version may be higher, perhaps 800 kilowatt hours. Nevertheless, the dynamics of the semi truck may be quite a bit better than what people think. Even with a 1 megawatt hour battery pack, the Tesla Semi is extremely compelling. Anything smaller than this, and Tesla starts to gain savings on weight, on efficiency, and on cost. Amazingly, Tesla's calculations are based on the maximum 82,000 pound load in the United States, but most trucks are rarely at 100% capacity all the time. So the actual range may be ahead of expectations. There have also been multiple other revelations that came up in Tesla's most recent conference call that go counter to conventional thought, and we may need to start rethinking the position of the Tesla Semi truck. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. The construction of Tesla's Austin Gigafactory has been completed. It seemed that this massive building, one of the largest in the world, would be the new home of the semi-truck. Tesla even incorporated roads inside of the factory so that semi-trucks could pass through. Now internal roads could effectively increase the surface area of the factory, which more easily allows for trucks to deliver raw materials or parts closer to where they need to go. However, typical trucks run on diesel, which is not suited for indoor use and would require additional ventilation, whereas an electric truck doesn't have this requirement. So it makes sense that these internal roads are dedicated for Tesla semis, and these may be the vehicle of choice for exactly that going forward, transporting materials for Tesla's operations. But that doesn't mean the truck will be manufactured at this factory. According to Tesla's installed capacity chart, there's no sign of Tesla's semi-truck being produced at Giga Texas at all. Instead, Nevada will be the primary location. We already knew that Tesla has had a small semi-truck factory near Giga Nevada. Back in 2020, Tesla purchased a building in the same park as the Nevada Giga factory, and it was reported in 2021 that Tesla was planning to produce five electric trucks per week at this location. This is the first and only type of vehicle so far being produced in the Giga Nevada area since the primary purpose of this Gigafactory is to produce batteries alongside Tesla's partner Panasonic who also has a huge investment stake in this factory. Now one thing that's strange is that it appeared as though Giga Texas was absolutely necessary to get the semi truck out of its development phase and into volume production. Giga Texas would offer a new larger space for semi to be built as it seemed that the Nevada location was just a pilot facility capable of only low volumes. At the same time, Giga Texas is producing its own 4680 battery cells, something that Giga Nevada doesn't do, at least not yet. And so Texas looks like the perfect place for semi, but that doesn't seem to be part of the current plan. As a matter of fact, on the most recent conference call, it was stated that the Tesla semi isn't even using the 4680 battery cells. 
This is a little mind-blowing because of all of Tesla's vehicles, the Semi seems to actually rely on 4680s the most. It looked like Tesla couldn't even build the Tesla Semi without 4680 cells. At Tesla's Battery Day presentation, they outlined their diversified cathode approach, highlighting that Cybertruck and Semi would use a high nickel cathode because they are mass-sensitive vehicles, and the Semi of course being much larger than the Cybertruck and having crucial weight limit restrictions in order to be able to support enough cargo capacity would definitely need these types of batteries. And so it's incredible that the Semi works without the 4680. This has to have an impact on some aspect of the vehicle, be it the range or maximum load capacity, since they'd be using more batteries, probably lower density 2170 cells coming from Giga Nevada to still achieve the same or similar specs. This is interesting because it demonstrates how efficient the semi truck may actually be. Competitors are struggling to come up with an electric truck that has let alone half the range of Tesla's semi truck. At the same time, battery experts have said that Tesla's truck is virtually impossible to build without some crazy breakthrough in battery technology. And here we have Tesla developing that crazy breakthrough battery tech, but then showing us that they don't even need it yet. Along the same lines, Tesla has been playing it actually quite safe lately with a contingency plan for many of its new products. They started building 4680-based Model Ys at Giga Texas, with Elon Musk citing that the 4680 ramp-up wasn't critical for production this year, but it would be for next year. While the 4680 ramp is growing at an extreme pace according to the company, tripling in volume over the last three months, Suppliers have also been increasing their battery output. The 4680 battery cell does appear necessary for Tesla's structural battery pack, but just a few months ago, Tesla also introduced the non-structural pack for the Model Y at Giga Texas in order to increase Model Y production, but this was a move interpreted as saving the 4680s for other vehicles, namely the semi-truck. That no longer appears to be the case, however, if these early semis aren't even using 4680s at this time, something that we didn't think Tesla could do. And so if Tesla can build the semi without 4680 battery cells, then what's the holdup? While Giga Texas is still a critical part of the mix, even if the semi isn't being directly produced there, basically Tesla must exceed the battery capacity needed for Model S, 3, X, and Y and planned Cybertruck capacity in order to get the semi. Otherwise, it makes more sense to put the batteries into these other vehicles which are significantly more lucrative given their higher prices relative to battery pack size. For instance, assuming a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack for the Model Y, Tesla can make 7 to 13 Model Ys for each semi depending on if it's a 500 to 1 megawatt hour battery pack for the semi. So even in the worst case, selling 7 Model Ys for a generously low $50,000 each is still $350,000 of high margin revenue. A semi truck priced at $180,000, or even if Tesla raises the price, is still far below the benefit of using the batteries for the Model Y or other vehicles instead. But this assumes that Tesla is battery constrained. So the fact that semi is now in production confirms that, at least for the time being, Tesla has more than enough batteries to cover all of its vehicle production, including the semi. And this is very important, otherwise they still wouldn't be making it. Now I think eventually they'll transition to 4680s for the Tesla semi truck, but for the time being, what may be happening is that Tesla is temporarily rearranging things. It makes sense that the semi is in Nevada and can get 2170 battery cells from Giga Nevada. That's convenient, but when it switches to 4680, Tesla would need to ship the batteries in, either from Giga Texas or from the 4680 Pilot Factory on Cato Road in California. This is a strange setup, since they'd be shipping 4680 cells from Tesla's California location to Nevada, but at the same time transporting 2170s from Nevada to Fremont in California. This seems pretty dumb. However, Tesla appears to have already thought of this, and this may better explain what Tesla may be up to in Nevada. According to Electric, Tesla is expanding Giga Nevada, and it's likely that they'll be working with Panasonic to build 4680 cells with this new addition to the factory. That would place 4680s right near the semi-plant, 
which would eliminate the need for transporting batteries back to Nevada since Giga Nevada is effectively supposed to be the export hub for batteries. So it's likely that Tesla switches to 4680 based semi trucks when this expected Giga Nevada expansion is completed. Now on the most recent conference call, Elon Musk said that Tesla semi production is ramping up to 50,000 trucks per year, which they should hit around 2024, given that it takes about a year to ramp up. He also declined to say the exact prices of the semi, but stated that they're much higher than a passenger vehicle. This suggests that Elon Musk may be raising prices above the $150,000 to $180,000 they originally were selling the semi at. And rightfully so, since a vehicle like this could pay for itself in just a few years with the savings in fuel compared to a diesel truck. But let's assume the $180,000 price tag. At 50,000 units, that's an additional $9 billion added to revenue where Tesla currently stands at about $74 billion for the whole company over the last 12 months. So that's about a 12% increase in revenue, and they're going to be making about 1.3 to 1.4 million cars this year. So 50,000 units is only about 3% of their production. They have this little factory in Nevada that needs to produce just 50,000 units per year, not millions like the other factories. And they also need to add a small extension to Giga Nevada to provide battery support. So this is a pretty incredible result from what looks like a relatively small footprint. Each semi truck also has about 16 times the impact of a regular car in terms of taking fossil fuel emissions off the road. So this simply bolsters Tesla's impact on fossil fuels, which over multiple years of growth should be pretty scary for oil companies if they can actually move the needle. It also doesn't look like Tesla is going to be stopping at 50,000 semis. Since back in 2018, Elon Musk was planning to produce 100,000 semis per year. So this 50,000 number seems to be a stepping stone for 2024 and also a way of setting expectations lower, something that I think Elon Musk has learned to do much better over the last few years, and he can still set a much higher internal target. But 100,000 semis per year would generate about $20 billion in revenue the same amount that the entire company made in 2018. Now research analyst Trip Chaudhry brought up in his research note that there was a relatively large percentage of Model S Plaid customers whom he spoke to who wanted to purchase the Tesla Semi for personal use and basically keep it in their driveways, thus hinting at a new market segment of consumers for the Semi truck that he says Tesla may not even know of. Now he may be right about this, but unfortunately, Tesla shouldn't actually focus on this segment, at least not at this time. First off, these individual customers would need to get special commercial driver's licenses in order to drive this vehicle, which may limit the actual size of this market. Secondly, Tesla needs to install new mega chargers for the semi, which they're starting off by putting on the routes of their customers. However, if their customers are not commercial players, but rather residential owners, then this may require mega charger locations to be more thinly spread out, which isn't a good strategy for Tesla when first starting out with this new product. Also, charging a Tesla semi at home would likely take days to get a full charge, so a mega charger may actually be needed here, which is a different situation than for passenger vehicles. And third, selling to a commercial customer has a much larger impact on fossil fuels since they actually use the vehicle heavily to transport goods, and Tesla wants to displace as many diesel trucks as possible. So while Trip brings up a good observation, it's not something that should affect Tesla for many years to come. So do you think Tesla will be able to hit 50,000 semi-trucks by 2024? And what do you think is Tesla's long-term target for semi-truck unit production? Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.